Hi, El Sereno Jaguars. It's Miss Newman, your librarian, and I am here with your IB attribute for the month of September, which is Thinker. So thinkers apply our thinking skills creatively and critically. So we look for all different ways to solve a problem or all different aspects of a decision before we make it. And um, critically means we analyze. We don't just like impulsively decide something or take like the easiest, fastest uh, route to solving a problem. I mean, sometimes we do, but but I think all of us have had the experience where we've been lazy in our thinking and we haven't really thought out something. And then there's always consequences, especially at a school where there's so many of us. I think it's really important um, in our classes when we're learning something or when we're dealing with people that we use our thinking skills when we are deciding things and working on things. So um, the book that I'm going to be reading to you today is called Nothing Stops Sophie the story of unshakable mathematician Sophie Germain. And um, the reason that I'm reading this book for Thinker is that she is somebody who really used her thinking skills. She lived at a time when women were not supposed to be mathematicians. You're gonna see how often that caused problems for her. And she solved a really, really complex mathematical problem that had um, effects on the way that we build things in real life. So this is a true story about Sophie Germain. Nothing stopped Sophie. Long ago in Paris, a young girl named Sophie Germain understood that math could do more than measure lengths of silk and tally accounts in her father's shop. In those days, people scoffed. They laughed at girls for thinking about anything more serious than hair ribbons or what music to play on the piano. But nothing stopped Sophie. Telling Sophie not to think about math was like telling a bird not to soar. Ideas came to Sophie day and night, and she sneaked out of bed to study math while others slept. Monsieur and Madame Germain worried that being smart would bring their daughter heartbreak and scorn that people would make fun of her. So they seized Sophie's candles, they stopped lighting fires in her room, and they snatched away her warm dresses, desperate to make her stay tucked into bed. Still, nothing stopped Sophie. One morning, Sophie was found bundled in blankets asleep at her desk next to a pot of ink that had frozen solid. Finally, Sophie's parents let their daughter indulge her mathematical dream. For a girl to become a mathematician would be impossible anyway. Sophie grew up during the French Revolution when starving peasants rioted against rich kings and nobles who feasted on sausages, salads, and sweets. When the streets were unsafe outdoors, Sophie's parents kept her indoors. As cries for equality echoed from the roof tiles, she cherished how math could make sense of the world. Math with its clear and simple laws, math with its strong sense of order, math which defines when the world is in balance. Curled up in her father's library, Sophie barely heard the distant, distant cannons that rattled the shutters. Sophie discovered that mathematicians use numbers as poets use letters, as a language to question, explore, and solve the secrets of the universe. She read how ancient Greeks wrote equations that made the impossible possible. Water flowed uphill. A lone man pulled mighty ships ashore. A scholar measured the size of the earth. Sophie longed to become a mathematician to write such poems of her own. By the time Sophie was 19, the French Revolution had simmered down and it was safe to walk the streets of Paris again. Sophie wanted to attend a university, but no professor would read a woman's work. So she secretly acquired notes from math classes and sent in homework by mail. She signed her papers, Monsieur or Mr. LeBlanc. Then one day a knock came at the door. Professor Joseph Louis Lagrange had come to meet the mysterious student who sent an extraordinary homework without coming to class. 
will never know who received the greater shock. Professor Lagrange could not have guessed that Monsieur Mr. Leblanc was a modest young lady in a ruffled blouse with a dark hair and a top knot, and Sophie could not have imagined a visit from a world famous scholar. Was her dream about to take flight? With Sophie's secret discovered, news of the girl prodigy, like the girl genius, ripped through Paris. Gossips couldn't imagine a girl so smart until they met her themselves, and soon Sophie's calendar swelled with dinner parties. She hardly knew what to say in these stuffy drawing rooms, surrounded by gawkers and finery. She ached to talk seriously about math, yet no mathematician would take a young lady truly under his wing. Still, nothing stopped Sophie. She kept up her studies. She seized every chance to chat with scholars at luncheons and in salons. Under her pen name, she wrote to one of the most brilliant mathematicians ever, Carl Friedrich Goss, even wrote back. But his letters stopped coming soon after he discovered that Mr. LeBlanc was a woman. At age 32, Sophie witnessed an experiment that revealed the hidden laws of math at work in our everyday world. She saw a scientist sprinkle sand onto a glass plate. As he rubbed a violin bow against the plate's edge, vibrations shook the glass until it rang out with sound. Astonished, Sophie watched the sand dance across the plate. It formed circles, then diamonds, then figure eights. The higher the note, the more quickly the vibrations shook the plate and the more intricate the sand's pattern became. Suddenly, Sophie realized that every hand knocking on a door, her own boots clicking along the cobblestones, every motion sent vibrations surging through nearby objects, just as waves flowed through water. The rest of Paris was agog, too. The prestigious Academy of Sciences offered a medal worth 3,000 francs to anyone who could find a mathematical formula that would predict patterns of vibration. The information could affect buildings, bridges, and who knew what else? How much vibration was too much? At what point would an object break? Academy scholars called the problem impossible. Their heads spun just thinking about the many ways vibration might move an object. But nothing stopped Sophie. Just as math measures how bird wings move up and down during flight, Sophie knew math could measure a surface moving up and down from vibration. She made her best guesses at what would affect the movement. Then she added and subtracted and multiplied and divided. Sophie spent two years trying numbers in different combinations to write her equations. Then she submitted her work to the Academy. And this time, Sophie used her own name. Sophie's work sent shockwaves through Paris. The contest had received only one entry, and it had come from a woman. Yet Sophie's solution was incorrect. When, when the Academy extended the contest, Sophie returned to work. For two more years, she tested her predict predictions by vibrating sand on plates. Finally, after thousands of calculations, the sand moved, just how Sophie's numbers foretold. Her equation was as precise and eloquent as a poem. Sophie submitted the only entry to the Academy again. This time, scholars agreed that her equation was correct, but they rejected her explanation for why it worked. Still, nothing stopped Sophie. She revised her research and submitted it to the Academy one more time. In 1816, Sophie Germain became the first woman to win, to, to win a grand prize from the Royal Academy of Sciences. After six years, she had shaken the Academy enough to shatter its resistance. No one could deny that she was a mathematician now. The human spirit, she later reflected, requires more resources inside when outside it has less. 
After Sophie's work, mathematicians sought even better ways to predict vibration patterns. Eventually, their discoveries made it possible to build the Eiffel Tower in Paris and modern skyscrapers and lengthy bridges all over the world. Sophie is celebrated today because nothing stopped her. Her fearlessness and perseverance have inspired many people. Perhaps she will also inspire you. That end. And um, the uh, book also talks about the way that Sophie's work wasn't just mathemat mathematics, it was also science, the science of physics. Um, so I hope you enjoyed learning about Sophie Germain and um, happy thinking this month of September. <laughs>